Tech It Up with Jessica Lee. I'm here with Ryan McCurdy, who is the director of Demand Gen at Druva. Welcome. Thank you. Ryan, how are you? I'm fantastic. How Great are you? to have you here. Thank you very much. It's like happy holidays. Yeah, you too. I'm really happy to join you. I'm uh, interested in your role, your responsibility, and also the market you're in. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, right now I'm the director of Demand Gen at Druva. Mm -hmm. um, we're a, a cloud data protection and management company. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been there for about two years and a quarter, roughly, um, and it's been really fantastic. Uh, the public cloud space is uh, exploding, the adoption of public cloud is uh, exploding, and we're built natively on it, on I'm, AWS. I know, you're, you're, you're considered one of the unicorn companies, so it's yeah. a very exciting place to be it in. It is, absolutely. But what is your responsibility uh, as a demand gen? Director, what does that sure. mean? You're, what are you trying to do? What are the metrics? Uh... Yeah, so um, you know, it really comes down to how are we driving um, pipeline for sales. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it starts with you know getting leads into the funnel, nurturing those leads to a certain point when we think they're ready for someone on our sales team to speak to them. Mm -hmm. We pass them over. Um, they call down and then, you know, hopefully there's a project. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to find as many projects as possible, intercept those projects, um, and generate as much revenue as possible for the business. Uh, now, that's a challenge because you, when you say project, timing is important. Mm -hmm. yep. Like, you have to know they're actually looking for a solution. They have a pain point and they are searching for it. So, how do you get the intent? Yeah. Um, so... And there's a few ways. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of this done is done today through lead scoring. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, there's a lot of intent providers. In mm -hmm. fact, there's probably too many intent mm -hmm. providers out there. So you have to do your due diligence when when looking for one. But um, uh, we, you know, we look at uh, if when a prospect comes into the funnel, we look for certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they're looking at certain assets or they're. Um, looking at our competitor's website. Okay. Um, a lot of it comes down to tracking. Like, how good is your tracking? How much of that visibility can you see? What does that, uh, that life cycle look like? You know, uh, for enterprise B2B marketing, you know, there's a buyer's journey. Um, and you really map out your content to the buyer's journey and mm -hmm. your tactics to the buyer's mm -hmm. journey to progress someone along. So, so like, if they're searching for a competitor's uh, name, your ad would appear in front of them to kind of distract them away from that path and go to your site. Yes. Instead? So, so there there are competitive <laughs> tactics like yes. that. You can you can certainly apply, um, and they are they are successful. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, uh, it's it's about catching people early, mm -hmm. right? Um, you want to you know you want to educate them on what you do and why you believe what you do is important mm -hmm. and. Uh, how you're different, and you know, for us at Druva, it's really easy because um, we believe that you know a cloud native solution built on AWS is the best way to manage data. We don't we believe trying to manage your data with legacy solutions for you know today really isn't applying very well anymore. It's hard to get your arms around the data sprawl and the data growth, and with cloud is the perfect solution. So. Part of it is us trying to educate on, educate the market mm -hmm. um, as public cloud adoption grows, um, and then of course, you know, really making sure that you know if people are educated to a certain extent, and we know that we think, oh, they're probably ready for us to reach out from a sales perspective to talk to them. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing that in a timely manner, and that follow up on leads is timely. And there's a lot of handshakes throughout the entire funnel. Um, so a lot of it's kind of optimization and process, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it's tracking and scoring, and there's a lot that goes into it. <laughs> and I know the company's been growing a lot. You have yeah. about 700 employees now. Yeah. Um, marketing is a, a, mm -hmm. a very significant team. Yeah. Maybe scaling might be a challenge since you're growing so fast. How do you it is, get, yeah. get everybody on the same page? Absolutely. So. Um, when I started, the company was close to 250 people, mm -hmm. uh, close to 300 people. So that I mean, it's you know that's a pretty big transformation. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, some of that is in marketing, a lot of it's in sales. Um, so it's you know it's getting everyone on the same page. And of course, as your workforce expands, people are working remote. You then have to have more process, right? Mm -hmm. More process for people to communicate with each other, more tools to communicate. Um, because when it's just like 
you know, you, me, and another person working together, it's really easy. We can just talk over the fence, and that's not really a big deal, right? We can move really quick. But when you're trying to move a 40-person team in the same direction, it's really tough. Mm. So um, it, it's just, it really boils down to communication, um, you know, aligning goals. That's a really big one. Um, and, yeah, that's that's more or less how we're doing it. Right. Um, and, you know, we're, we're seeing the benefit. Okay. And you've had some changes in marketing uh, a lot of new players coming in we have yeah so um um we have a uh, new cmo sherry who's fantastic mm-hmm. uh and you know we've we've really built out our corporate marketing side of the house mm-hmm. um which means more awareness uh and branding more for branding, druva that's right. which is great because in my opinion um awareness and branding lifts all boats mm-hmm. um uh, which makes my job easier yes. because leads convert better. Down that's the right. That's right. Um, so really thankful to have everyone on board. Okay. Um, I think that uh, you mentioned uh, the, the team grown very quickly. Mm-hmm. So I think leadership is very important in trying to recruit talent and, and retain talent, uh, motivating people. Uh, can you share with us your leadership's approach? Yeah. So, um, you know, when I, when I first started, um, I actually had to build out my team from scratch. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm close to five people today Mm -hmm. um, for directs. Um, And, um, you know, know, for me, it's a course about finding the right people from a cultural fit. Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to come in and they have kind of, you know, they're scrappy enough, but also have some good industry knowledge. Um, They're, you know, of course, you're, you're, um, the people we work with kind of become like a second family. So you always want to make sure, you know, there's a, there's a, yeah, you get along really well. Um, but my team has been absolutely fantastic. Um, and you know, what I really try and do is empower my, um, my directs to really take full advantage of their skills, Mm -hmm. um, equip them with whatever they need. Um, I try to make them the heroes. Um, and they certainly are. They've done a fantastic job. They work super hard. Um, I see all the hours they put in, um, and I'm very proud of uh, what they accomplish and their results. Um, and I do my best to just, you know, if there's something in their way, to try and remove that barrier mm-hmm. for them. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been really great. And you know, it's um, they you know they follow me, and I, I follow them. Oh, so, right. it's, so it's great. That's it's, good. It's great. You have a very interesting background. Um, you, you did not start out in tech marketing, so tell us, tell us a little bit of the audience. What's your background? Sure, yeah. So um, I used to work in video production down in Los Angeles. Um, so doing all types of uh, commercials, music videos, uh, reality TV. Um, you had some wonderful mentors. Too. I did. Well-known yeah. Mentors. Yep. Uh, Jeff and Prudence Sternen, uh, or Sternen. Um, of uh, who's talking now? Um, the the old the old school show, um, but and Jeff Bark he wrote Sleepless in Seattle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and I, I you know I ended up going for my BA in uh, film and video production, and mm-hmm. all of that really helped me uh, become a better storyteller. Yeah. Um, and I believe that's what marketing is when when you really synthesize it down. It's about telling an effective story. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know that that's really helped me in my marketing career. So you you also contribute to the whole messaging then the, the corporate messaging branding and all Very, that. The I, storytelling. Yes, I I do try and uh, interject my opinion <laughs> on a lot of things. Um, but you know, um, just from my role in the organization, from a demand gen perspective, mm-hmm. we do a lot of writing. Um, we you know we take a lot of the complex messages, mm-hmm. make them a bit more pithy, catchy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're we're always trying to get someone to the aha moment. Okay. Why Druva really matters, yes. um, and get them to understand why do we believe what we believe. Okay. Um, and that's a, and that's our goal, and I, we do a good job of it. Um, Who's your ideal customer then? Um, I do profile. Well, so it actually, uh, you know, our, our data protection, um, solution now encompasses, you know, everything from, uh, cloud workloads, to infrastructure to endpoints. So it kind of varies across, uh, those, you know, those different, um, uh, you know, basically the solutions vary and the use cases vary. However, um, you know, we speak a lot to IT people, IT managers, IT directors, CIOs, people with anyone who really has a 
kind of a data transformation initiative or a cloud initiative. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the CISO. Maybe also? Um, at times, yeah, Druva has also a good ransomware use case as well. Mm-hmm. Um, in a, in a really clever way, mm. um, we can be the last line of defense um, for mm. ransomware. But um, you know, and all we uh, we really believe that the you know the cloud, specifically being built natively on the public cloud on AWS, is the right way to solve these problems. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a noisy marketplace. There's a lot of SaaS players out yeah. there who say, "Yeah, we do data protection, mm-hmm. and data management, and data management as a service." Yeah. Um, how do you how do you rise above the noise and distinguish yourself on the marketing front? Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely a challenge, no doubt about it. There's a lot of uh, cloud washing, as we like to say, um, and a lot of our competitors do say that they're a cloud solution, and um, we know that you know um, people are looking for the cloud. Um, they don't always know why one is better than the other. Um, so, uh, with us being cloud native. Uh, and built on AWS, we really talk to those points. Mm-hmm. Um, but more importantly, I think um, we really try and convince people. Um, we really let them know like why we believe what we believe, and mm-hmm. that is that for everything we do, for everything we do, um, we're really trying to push the status quo forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and we believe cloud, public cloud, is the best way to do that. Um, what are the metrics that? People can expect if they have uh, legacy systems, and you're saying cloud is better. Mm-hmm. What do you mean is better? Why is it better, and how do you justify that? Yeah, so um, the the data sprawl and the data growth make it really hard for anyone in data protection to get their arms around it mm-hmm. to really manage their data. Um, and with the cloud, it's a different way of thinking um, because what you're doing is essentially now you're centralizing all your data. Okay. So you can easily get your your, de- or your arms around it. Um, you have that central visibility. So okay. there's a compliance layer okay. that you have, right? And Druva takes it an extra step where we've added things like archival disaster recovery, mm-hmm. uh, e-discovery. So it's not just a, a one-off solution you would buy. It's really a data management platform. So it's easier to manage data. You have more visibility to do compliance. Mm-hmm. Um, how about the cost? Yeah, so with um, you know with uh, the cost piece of it, we actually have one of the lowest TCOs in the industry, mm-hmm. and the reason that is is because when you move from your you know your your conventional way of thinking with hardware, tape, etc., um, you no longer have to pay for this this legacy you know the legacy hardware essentially, mm-hmm. and that's where we see a lot of the cost savings, mm-hmm. especially companies that have a lot of remote sites, right? Where they have you know, they're a global organization. They have all these remote sites. They don't have an IT team. That's when you know our customers see the biggest TCO savings. Okay. Um, but you know, uh, we have uh, we have some TCO calculators, and their eyes always light up. And we're like, hey, this is actually what you would ha- mm-hmm. you know you would be saving if you moved you know your data protection to the cloud. Right, right. So these are operational benefits, mm-hmm. uh, and therefore it would probably contribute to the company being able to be a lot more agile, go to market faster, and, and stay a lot more nimble and fast and, and like competing against others be a lot more Absolutely. The compl- we're taking a lot of the complexity out of backup now, mm-hmm. right? Um, so agility is one of those huge initiatives, right? Um, you know, um, that's why so many people moved over to VMware and virtualization. Mm-hmm. It makes you more agile. Right. Um, and you can be more innovative faster. Yeah. Exactly. And that's essentially what cloud does as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're optimized for the public cloud. So one of the biggest things... Um, out there that really makes us different is just the on-demand scale, mm-hmm. right? So if you have uh, an M and A activity going on, or a new office, or whatever that is, you can it's you click a button and now you're protected. So it's it's really really cool. Uh, what about lessons learned? Given all of these integrated marketing practices, the challenges you face, internal challenges, uh, external challenges, what are some of the lessons learned that you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah. Um, I think one of the big ones um, is, you know, when you go into an organization, it's really important to understand how the organization operates. 
Um, I think, you know, when, whenever you start in, at a new company, it's really easy to think, well, everything I did at my last company is going to apply here. Mm -hmm. That's not always the case. Um, and I, I've had to learn this. Um, I, I've had to learn this at a previous company um, where I was like, oh, yeah, why, why isn't this working? And it's, it's really because you're not doing enough due diligence up front to understand the organization, the process, the go-to-market. Mm. Um, so take time. Yeah, yeah. I think you really have yeah. to take the time to understand the environment you're operating in. Okay. Um, I, I think another one, um, and this, you know, at every marketing organization I've worked in, uh, it's always a challenge, and that's reporting. Mm. So, like, how robust is your reporting? Uh, Druva, we've built it out where we have full funnel reporting. Mm. Uh, we, you know, we're, we we use the traditional um, serious decisions demand funnel, um, and it's been great uh, to really kind of have a full funnel visibility and mm. really see how our campaigns and programs are performing. But um, at a lot of companies, they'll report out of two different instances. They'll maybe report out of Marketo or Salesforce, and then you have conflicting data sets. Mm. So one team is right, the other team thinks they're right, and then you, now you're in a QBR. You know, arguing what's the right number, right? And nobody, nobody wants that. Okay. So, um, I think if you can get your data right um, as one of the first things you build in marketing, okay. and that tracking setup, um, mm -hmm. that will help you in a lot of ways. Because then you're not just throwing stuff at the wall; you're mm -hmm. really knowing what's moving the needle forward. So you're talking about a another dashboard that's pulling data from the CRM and from the yeah. marketing automation, right? So exactly. Because marketing sales have to be aligned uh, to give you the full picture. Exactly. Uh, so at Druva, we use um, we use Marketo and Salesforce, mm -hmm. um, but then we have a BI tool on top of it. Okay. Uh, so this is custom built dashboard. It reporting. is. It is a custom okay. build. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, but we have a dashboard for everything. Okay. Uh, which can be a blessing. <laughs> well, you are a software company. Yes, you should be true. able to build this your own true. software dashboards. Yeah. Um, but it's really really helpful. 2019 is approaching. So what's exciting, what's new, what are you going to do next year, Ryan? Um, you know, so I, I think uh, the biggest marketing wave that's going on right now um, is everything ABM. And it's definitely a buzzword that's mm -hmm. out there. Define uh, what that is. What is ABM? So it's account-based marketing. Okay. And it, it's funny, target accounts have been around for, um, for as long as I've been in marketing okay. and okay. before that. Uh, but now it just kind of has the ABM term associated with it. But what's really cool is the um, marketing technology has really caught up to, you know, enable marketers to target specific accounts better, okay. target members of the buying team better, better mm -hmm. get your content um, in front of those buying team members. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to do that. And there's a lot of ABM solutions out there that mm -hmm. uh, enable that. Um, so when you kind of couple that intent data and across your target accounts, you can really see, hey, it looks like, you know, this is a target account we want to try and get into. Um, it looks like they have a project going on, mm -hmm. right? You know, basically. And like, these are the right people to touch. Exactly. So the content is tailored to each person, like the buyer, mm -hmm. the IT, maybe the executive exactly. who signs the check. Absolutely. Right? So these are different profiles and you have to kind of tailor the message to them. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so Serious Decisions calls that their, um, I believe it's their messaging novelist. Um, and it's, it's really creating content for each persona. Mm -hmm. Um, already doing persona marketing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but once you kind of cascade that across target accounts and, uh, really align those motions, um, you know, it really creates a more, um, relative and, uh, or I'm sorry, relevant and meaning, meaningful engagement. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, that's kind of what, you know, in, in my mind, marketing is like, you know, 50% of the the battle is just being relevant and timely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so you've been doing that, but you're saying you're going to do even more so next year. Yeah. So it, it's 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 really coming down to where you know if um, you know John Smith from Company X Y Z comes to our website, we want to have the messaging on the website change in front of him and be tailored for him. Mm -hmm. So it's doing things along those lines, mm -hmm. um, which is really impactful. Right. It's building out additional content for the buying team members, making sure that they're going down a certain nurture path, whereas mm -hmm. our decision makers are going down a different path. And um, it's really just maturing our ABM model more mm -hmm. um, and capitalizing on new technologies. So Wonderful. That sounds um, very exciting. It is. It's really exciting. I mean, it's really on kind of the forefront of this marketing wave. Okay. Um, 
So, you know, Druva really empowers us to really go after this stuff. So it's pretty cool. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. Look forward to hearing uh, your ABM success next year. Absolutely. I want to welcome you back. Absolutely, yeah. There you have it. Take it up with Jessica Lee.